to geopolitical expert Stuart Sturzel. Uh, Mr. Sturzel, welcome to RT. Do you also sense double standards in the stance of the Western governments? Uh, good afternoon. Yes, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, like to comment on whether it's double standards or not, but what I would like to say is that in reviewing the Ukrainian situation, it's always best to conduct matters not via the media and not via making statements accusing or with one side accusing, accusing another of double standards. Uh, this only leads to potential conflict, whereas this entire matter should be taken behind closed doors between primarily diplomats from Ukraine, from all factions within Ukraine, and if they wish to uh, interact with Russia and all Western governments, this should be done in a diplomatic manner and a discreet and subtle manner, because inflammatory statements with one side accusing the other of double standards, etc. And it, this can apply to all directions, uh, serve no purpose. It just continues to make the conflict or potential conflict more probable. Whereas what is required is to make it less probable through discreet diplomatic discussions, not via the media, but via diplomatic channels. And so that's uh, my view. Here's how Chancellor Merkel explains Europe supporting Kosovo's independence. Let's now take a listen together. In Kosovo, we had years in which the international community had no power to intervene, while Slobodan Milosevic carried out his ethnic cleansing. NATO then decided to act alone because Russia continuously blocked any UN mandate on Serbia. That situation is in no way similar to what is happening today in Ukraine. Uh, what do you think? Are there no parallels to be drawn here? I think that one must always be careful to draw parallels in any situation because if, for example, one takes the current situation in Crimea, <clears throat> it is possible to draw parallels using the Sudetenland situation of 1939. It is also possible to draw parallels with the expulsion of Germans from the Sudetenland to 1945. So any party can use any historical example to either prove or disprove this situation. The point is that none of them apply because each situation is <laughs> unique. And uh, just taking, taking historical examples doesn't solve the situation. It's playing games for one upmanship. Whereas I say again, the, the actual thing to do is Meanwhile, to solve a crisis, not play points. Uh, the Chancellor also praised West, Western nations for working uh, or for working on a diplomatic path out of crisis. Uh, what do you make of their efforts? Well, there is certainly praise due because open conflict, in other words, shooting, has been avoided. But there are different levels of praise and different levels of success. I wouldn't say that it has been particularly successful on a diplomatic front because it has been quite a long time since such an open war of words has erupted between what one can loosely call the East and the West. As a priority, I think that should stop. Who I do think deserves praise are the Ukrainian people in the Crimea, both ethnically Russian Ukrainians and ethnically Ukrainian Ukrainians, for the following reason. This crisis has gone on for too long without some oil being poured on troubled waters. And when this happens, the chances of it escalating into violence increase substantially. Mm -hmm. I think it's a tribute to all people of Crimea okay. that they have in fact kept it from degenerating further. Mr. Not Sturzel, so much to unfortunately, we have to leave it there. Stuart Sturzel, strategic geopolitical expert, thank you very much indeed for your time. We appreciate it. Pleasure.